Good morning, Derby Jack here. It is Tuesday morning. Um, of course, I get up and I'm looking around, you know, checking Twitter out. The one thing I will say I like about Twitter, Twitter, I like it and I don't like it because I get kicked off there too. Um, but Twitter uh, does at least allow a little bit more controversial, you know, tweets uh, and messages than, you know, you know, baby ScrewTube and, you know, many, so many others. Now, ScrewTube or YouTube is about the worst because they, they can't take anything, you know. Now, what gets me, I think they're all going to end up changing sooner or later. You know, like, you know, they got CNN that's kicking some butt heads out, you know, talking heads are kicking some of them out. Uh, that little bald-headed guy, Schleitzer or whatever his name is, and they, 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 they got getting rid of some of, some of the other people, you know, and, um, little blonde-haired Nazi guy who's always uh, talking uh, in, 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 you know, in the uh, media room and all that. But anyway, the, it gets me is, is that these people, I lo listen to little Schleicer or whatever it is, on his NAS last night, and he says, well, you know, CNN is for integrity, and CNN, it, 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 you know, is for truth, and all this other, you know, and, and he's thinking himself, like, you know, what, I think, like, looking in his face, you could tell, like, why am I being taken off? I'm, I, I'm a source of truth and integrity, and, and that's his pride, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about, pride. And uh, what kind of pride is being taught to our children? What kind of pride is being manifested in the world? Well, if we look at the haughty and we think of those people who think of themselves as being a little bit more than maybe you or me because of their resources and their so-called intelligence and, their, and, and where they were, and, well, the one thing they don't really like to promote, but the truth of the matter is their bloodlines. So they're proud of coming up through history and their families have the bloodlines and stuff. Think of the Rothschilds. Think of how long this family has reigned and had so much uh, money. They, they're probably original demons that fell, if you really want to know about the possessed. They are possessed with the original demons, the, 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 the real fallen demons of the, uh, of the past. And this is why they want to raise the history. They want to raise the past. For you people who are Trumper, what did Trump always say? We need to bring back, bring back. What was he, what was he referring to? Bring back what? Then when he put a hex on the America, such a dark, dark, dark. Remember that little speech? Such a dark, dark, you know. He just went on and on. He hexed the country. So for you Trumpers, get off you. But anyway, you talk about a prideful man. Of course, yes. Twitter does do a lot more. They got people who like Trump and love Trump. And if I say anything against him, oh, I'm just an evil person. But the thing about Trump, there's a good example of pride. But you got to understand what stands behind him. If it was just face, face value, hearing Trump and seeing Trump and seeing what Trump had done during his, his reign, it all looked good. It, it was like he's giving back to the people. The problem is, is that we need to understand who Trump is. Trump is a Zionist. All Zionists stick together. He plays a part. Remember, Trump was an actor. He was. Yeah, he was a businessman, a builder, but he also acted. He had his own television show. He, he, he was loved as a, as, as, a, as a showmanship. He had his showmanship prideful to the very core. But his love was Zionism. On his real wall, there's a picture somewhere a guy had put out before Trump became elected. And on his wall in his office at Trump Tower, on a wall, was a picture of the tree of life, the Zionist, Zionist tree of life. Anybody who has that on their wall, they're not for you. They're not for me. Let's look at pride some more. What kind of pride is not being taught to our children? Well, this type of pride is different. It is a pride that, of accomplishment. 
you learned something and you learn and 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 when we were a kid you when, when you got you, 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 you did your little homework and stuff like that and you did a good job and you got a star and you were proud of that star you know you, you, you know if you got a raise because you did a good job you were proud of that raise and you were proud of the, of the accomplishments that you made that's a good pride that's a good feeling to have and it motivates you to want to be better but see that's not what being taught to our children. They're being taught that that type of pride doesn't exist, that you deserve just because you're alive. Remember the Obama years, what they told those idiots during that time? Obama was sitting there, you can be whatever you want. Don't listen to anybody. You are the future. You are. So they're out there t uh, burning businesses, burning cars, turning them over, uh, throwing rocks at cops, and it was okay. And then that generation brought up a next generation of prideful assholes. So the type of pride that should be taught in schools and, and should be taught from the home is a pride of accomplishment. But the pride that there's being taught is being manifested all around the world if you just look at it. Look at the haughty, the rich, the ones who think their shit don't stink. They're prideful. People, people in power, Anthony Fauci, you know, um, well, I can't say pervy Joe because he don't even know what the hell he is. He don't even realize he's using president half the time. I think they got him hopped up on some type of drugs that when he gets behind a prompter, he, 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 he's just, you know, I don't know. I'm not even sure if even he's alive. I mean, it seems like all the pictures they show of him are always seem to be different. I think he's got clones, but I don't know which clone is worse i don't know which clone is the dumbest you know didn't they always say that every time you make a clone of a person uh, uh that they get dumber and dumber well pride so the pride that's being taught today is a pride of wrong accomplishment look at what i have been able to do to the world anthony valci those people in high places in different countries who have power now you know, you think a little Trevo up there or whatever his name is up in Canada. You call it, you talk about a prideful, power-hungry piece of shit. There you go. Prideful to the core. There's a good example of a dead piece of crap inside of a body that is proud of being the type of person he is. When people put, here's the thing of people like him. When people, when he's walking down the streets in that motorcade, I told you about his motorcade, I think it was Ontario, a town he was going, and he had like 50 cars following him, real nice Cadillacs and stuff like that. For him, motorcade for him, that pride, I'm coming through town, look at me. Yeah, get your phones out and, and, and look at my motorcade. And then when, they, when people are out in the streets and he's walking out and they're sitting there hollering at him saying, resign, do this and that, he smiles at him because he knows there's nothing that they can do. That's pride. He's supposed to be working for the people, but it seems like he's the overlord of the people. That's pride. That's bad. That's not good. Uh, uh, CEOs out there who, who, who work their, their, their people to death with low pay. Amazon. You know, the leaders, all these leaders who, who have businesses, look at where they are. Look at what got them there. They may have, and most people get into their business and, you know, may, like a lawyer. Maybe a lawyer goes in for the right reasons, but after they're there for a while, they realize where the money is. All of a sudden, all that ethics, all that morality, all that truthfulness, all that, you know, that goes out the window because now... Pride, money, prestige, you know. Let's say you're or a judge who's, who, who always, he always makes his decisions, you know, according to his pride, not according to what's right or wrong. Pride. Proud. That's so why I said, when you go back to people like Anthony Fauci and you think of all these people out there who were on television, proud, prideful, overbearing. Think that their shit just don't stick, but everybody else's does. You look at your bloodlines out there in high places, like I said in the beginning, who've been out there for ages. Rothschilds, Soros, Gates, all of them, you know. You, you, you look back at history, all the bloodlines, 
I think I told you before, some years back, a little girl, seven, eight years old, did a little uh, a research uh, for a school and did something on Obama and, uh, and found out that Obama was related to the Bushes and was related to, uh, uh, the, uh, was related to uh, in some way, uh, to, to the Trumps. I mean, so for all you people, you don't know these things and you're sitting there and it's like, oh, oh, that's not true. Well, go look it up for yourself. You might be able to find it if you actually look. Most of you people won't do it because you're pride. Let's talk about your pride. Your, your, your pride is, works two ways. Your pride works with fear. You're too proud to want to know the truth because you're in fear that if you know the truth, that'll make you a dumbass. And the last thing you want to be is a dumbass. So you will not look for, uh, or you will not look at the point of people had side effects from the you-know-what. Uh, you will not look at the deaths because of you-know-what. You, you will not look at that. But when they tell you on television that it was the other, the ones who didn't, you believe that. I sit here and tell you I've never had it, and yet, and yet I'm still here. I'm not sick. I'm still alive and kicking. And I have other ailments, and yet I'm still here. Now, I'm proud of that. I'm proud to the point that I made the right decision in my life. I'm proud to the point that I listened to the Holy Spirit. Yes, I'm very proud for that. Because I did the right thing. That's a good pride. And I listen. I'm proud that I listen to my Holy Spirit that dwells within me. Pride and fear can go hand in hand. Anthony Fauci is very proud of the accomplishments, but at the same time he's very fearful because he's the man on top and he's had it good. He's had it good. Got all this money. But now he's afraid. So his pride has now turned into fear. He knows that the, uh, that, that the, um, the courts, he knows that everything's catching up with him. And like I said uh, last night, I'm very flabbergasted that this happened so quickly. I didn't expect this at this time. I thought that maybe when this type of thing would happen, it would happen after more people are gone. And um, I really think they've gotten the world population down to a 65%. I really do. I don't know if we're, we're down to 500 million yet, but I know we're very close to that. And they're very proud of what they've accomplished. Isn't that sick? Isn't that sick? So proud to have taken lives. Hmm. Yeah, pride. Ego. The drive of madmen. That's right. That's the driver of madmen. That's the. That that that's the. That's it. That's the power. Their pride is their power. And guess where their pride comes from? Their pride comes from. Spiritual. Hate. Like I said, a lot of people go into their vocation. With good intentions. But after being there and after working the system and the system works in you, eventually you can be broken down. Change of mind, change of heart. When the demons come and possess you, you no longer or oppress you. Remember, if you're a Christian, you can be oppressed. And of course, eventually the Spirit of God will leave you. If... But... Just remember these areas of pride. What is a good pride? Remember what a good pride that you should instill in your children. Pride of accomplishment. Pride to do something good. Being proud of your, of your good nature and your, and your good heart. And being proud and, 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 and being self-sufficient in your heart that you are a good person. Those are the things that you should be proud of. Not being overbearing. Not being um, oppressive to other people. Hater. Hatred. Oh, I know, a lot of people go, well, you're a very hateful person because of the things you say. And Well, no. I'm saying it out of a different context. The things that I say is supposed to wake you up. I don't say it out of pride. My, I say it because I fear for you. I fear for those people who are not saved. And I want you to wake up. 
Because I, I, I see people who, who, who are ministers and they talk so nice, but nobody wakes up. The, the churches aren't waking the people up. The ministers in the churches aren't doing their job. I have to put, I have to put myself in the place of these ministers who are failures. They're, they're proud of, of, of their achievement, but their achievement wasn't based on God. Their achievement was based on self-sufficiency and their goals. Remember, I'm not going to go through the story again, but for some of you who've heard me, remember I told you when I was in Bible college, I remember a professor telling us about a guy who left a seminary, went into a small church of a, of a pastor who was old, and went in there, and after 10, 15, 20 years doing it on his own for God, the church was in the He built it up, and then all of a sudden, after he got old and slowed down, so did the church, and it slowed down. And it was in the same position as it was when he walked in. It grew, then it shrunk. And it was all because of him and his pride. I'm going to do all this for God. I'm going to do all this for God. Um, but never allowed the Holy Spirit or God to work in him. What kind of pride is that? Oh, you did it for God, but look at Without God in it, it never accomplished anything. It died. You, you were going off your own charismatic, and you had, the, you had the ability of getting that charismatic and pushing it to all your parishioners, and people were coming in, and younger people. It all looked good. It was all great. But when the fizzle went down, there was nothing installed. It was make-believe. It was an emotional thing. And it's like I always said when I went to Bible college and I went, I went, I worked at the Union Mission here in Nashville. We, 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 you'd have preachers up there and they'd be all, you know, Jesus and, and, and Moses and they'd get you all emotional and the same drunkards and the same, and the same old people and, and the same street people and the winos and the, and the drug addicts, they all would come up every night and get born again emotionally. But the next day, nothing changed, and they went back out into the world and did the same thing. And every night, it was the same crap. And look at what happened. The pride of the ministers and what they knew about the Bible and how they could preach and yee and yay and all that, all that pandemonium that they do, especially at charismatics and all that, they're proud of that. That's their pride. They're very proudful of what they think they accomplish. Think of Osteen, very proud SOB. Sits there and talks against God in his own way. Sits here and says all religions are the same. They go to the same place. How does a man get that much attention as a Christian when he walks up there without a Bible in his hand? Like right now, I don't have a Bible, but I'm speaking truth. There's a difference. The people who listen to me, and they're not very many, and it's not my fault. It's YouTube's fault. It's the media. They won't let me grow. They're afraid of people like me. And I don't say that to be proudful. I say that because they do it to so many other people. People who are even more humble than me and say some of the same things that I say. And I say that when I say humble. I, I, I'm not going to be wrong. That's another word I'm going to work on what it means to truly be humble. And I'm not going to say that, I'm not going to go into that tonight, today, but basically, uh, um, they're, they're not humble in respect of what they do in, or say. See, I don't seem to look like I'm humble, but I am. I'm very humble inside. I'm humble enough to do and say what the Holy Spirit tells me to do and say. And it may not be what you expect, because most of you have gone to churches where the ministers are self-sufficient. They're not listening to the Holy Spirit. They're, they're talking to you religiously. They're talking to you by the ways they were told to talk to you. They're, they're telling you things that, uh, that, that, that they were trained to tell you. You know, I hear more people, there's a brother, that I listen to a lot, Elijah Kingdom Family. And he's not literally a minister, but the man, when I listen to him, this brother knows more about the Word of God than any man who's gone to seminary or Bible college. 
I went to Bible college and I had to relearn everything. I, I, I came back out and realized that the church wasn't operating the way it was. Then I realized that the words that I was, thing I was being taught and little by little God was training me. The Holy Spirit was working in me. It couldn't be done all at once. I had to gradually be taught, gradually be pulled away from all the bullshit that I was taught. All the, all the misinterpretation, I had to be retrained. And then understanding that when the Spirit's telling you that the Bible isn't quite right anymore, that you're learning about quantum effects and you're born, learning about spiritual possessions and it goes beyond the spiritual manifestations in the real world. Things that do change, things that, that do, you know, you see pictures of, uh, 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 of supposed ghosts, you know, moving chairs around and things like that. Some of them are fake and there's many of them out there that are real. I mean, if demons can manifest in the real world, what do you think, what, why would you think that things like changes of Bibles and emblems, you know, like the Chevy and, and, and the um, plate and the, and the Ford emblem and things like that, things that just can miraculously change. How it happens, I don't know. Somebody go back in time and change something? Did, I, know, I don't know. Did somebody pull a different resource out of a different dimension? I don't know. I pretty much believe that's pretty much what happens. You got the colliders and you got other things out there and sorcery, machines of sorcery. And you have sorcerers, your scientists and pseudoscience. Very proud of what they've done. Think about that, the collider, all the people behind that thing. They've been working at that thing for a long time. Do you know the technology of the, uh, 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 of the uh, collider is the same kind of technology that was used for uh, the clock, the time machine that Hitler had, uh, reverse rotation in high speeds, opens up portals. Many people out there are afraid of what they could do. I'm not afraid because I know they're going to do it. I know they've been doing it. Why? The word has warned us. The word has told us that you're going to do these things. And like I said, most of you are too proud to accept that. You're too proud to believe that the world in which you live in, too proud to believe that the Bible you're reading, that things have changed in it, that you're no longer the type of Christian you should be because you've been reading with misinterpreted eyes. You've been reading with clouded eyes. You've also been reading words that have been changed that misrepresent what certain things mean. Wrong teaching can give you a wrong foundation. A wrong foundation will never put you on the platform of anything right. It always take you into a wrong area. So people go to church and for years they're going down a, a road that's keeping them, taking them further and further and further away from God. And you try to explain that to them, their pride gets in the way. They can't accept the fear of being wrong. The fear that everything that you've put your heart into all this time has been wrong. Many people can't accept that. Many, many people out there are too afraid to accept being wrong. Too many people out there like who believe in our government Believe that the left and right are different. Can't believe that when the cameras are off, they're all buddy buddies. That everything that they're doing is all part of a, a play. It's all staged. And you think one side's against the other and they're not. They're too proud to let you know that. They're too fearful. What does the word say? Because everything that I'm telling you, I'm going to give it to you from the word. For God is not what? Given us a spirit of fear. But he's given us a spirit of, not fear, of power, love, and a sound mind. There's where proper pride comes. Not living in fear of anything. 
power? First of all, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. Power is motivated by what? Love. And the love is controlled and the motivation sound mind. So the sound mind operates the power in love, not in fear. What they teach in the church is the old total opposite. They can read the words, but they leave you in fear. And they leave you in pride, whether you recognize it or not. Please think about these things. Pray on them. Let the Holy Spirit teach you. Don't be so prideful. Don't be so fearful to be wrong. Derby Jack out. The lion's already trying to leave, but Derby Jack out. See you all on the other side.